Hello there, internet. Mog White here, and I got another Legends of Runeterra video for you guys today. I say another, even though this video is not the norm. As you can tell, first of all, I look like I just woke up, even though it is 7 p.m. my time. <laughs> and second of all, uh, I'm not featuring any gameplay. I have this full screen thing going on, which I'm going to switch over from real quick because there is... There's way too much detail, man. Too, too much HD. So without further ado, I'm going to switch on over to what we're going to be talking about today. And today, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen we're going to be talking about the winners and losers of the post go hard meta what a title i know right wish i came up with it myself <laughs> this is an article written by a gigas a gigas is a phenomenal legends of runeterra player top of the food chain we've actually ran into uh, him quite a few times in masters ranked ladder and he's always giving us some really strong games and it's just a fantastic player that i i definitely uh, think has a lot of knowledge going on for him when it comes to this game and he's also very eloquent in the way he expresses himself and has written a very neat article that I enjoyed reading very very much which is why I want to share it uh, in today's video as we get to talk about what is gonna happen after the big go hard nerf in case you live under a rock or is not or are not as obsessed you know with <laughs> with children's card games as others uh, Go Hard got nerfed yesterday. Uh, in particular, the transformed version of the card. Basically, you know, when you play Go Hard, it converts into Pack Your Bags. Pack Your Bags now, instead of costing one mana, cost five. That is perhaps the biggest nerf I have ever seen in any card, in any card game ever. Though my memory can be a little bit iffy in that regard, but I, I can't really come up with any other like nerf that has been as significant, right? Changing a card from one cost to five is uh, pretty unheard of. Uh, also, you know, there are people defending this by saying, well, it's not the actual card that they're nerfing, you know, they're nerfing the transformed card. It, it's still, it, that doesn't make any difference, you know, like it's still... Uh, a, a world of a difference between like now and before like before you were able to play pack your bags for one mana and that was the biggest strength of the deck right the fact that it was able to spread out uh, a swarm for honestly very cheap costs in general like you had a bunch of great one drops like jack butcher which are very easy to enable with the deck fortune croaker which i believe is fundamentally broken uh, amongst other uh, really just a good value one to three drops in general and thus with the ability to spread out so so fast and always having that one mana in the back to threaten your opponent and punish them for trying to, to develop a board themselves to block your attack your weaker units in general you will get blown back by a five uh, damage overall aoe board wipe that also manages to hit you in the face as well which means that it can be combined with commander Landros in the late game to just straight up kill you right Fantastic card. Uh, outstanding. Yeah, I, I think we've all been very fond of uh, Go Hard and of Evelyn just dancing in front of us as uh, our hatred towards her has just been growing and growing and growing uh, throughout this past month. And uh, ultimately, the card is gone. And it's gone. Thank fucking God. Like, like it's actually fitting that the name is Pack Your Bags, right? Like, just pack your bags and get the fuck out of here, girl. Jesus Christ. Anyways, we are past that, right? And this has very heavy implications because, as many of you know, Go Hard was a very oppressive deck. It has been around for a while, and uh, it really uh, flourished in the European Masters. As uh, towards like the second half of that tournament, uh, people started utilizing Twisted Fate Go Hard and slowly but surely optimizing the deck. I believe the concept surged. Uh, in Japan with uh, the player TL Red. At least that's the first guy who I saw you know, utilizing this card in this sort of deck in which you combine Twist of Fate and Bilge Water with Shadow Owls. His was more of a cool list though. It was actually more synergistic and uh, it made it made more sense from a deck building perspective at first. But then you, you realize that Legends of Runeterra is not always the, the most like synergy rewarding card game out there. And sometimes you're just better off slapping in the good stuff, you know, just get the good stuff at three mana, the good stuff at two mana. And ultimately, the formula was cracked, like you needed to combine all these cheap uh, cards uh, from Bilgewater that allow you to draw and cycle through your deck, alongside Zap Spray Fin to Tutor for Go Hard specifically, as you removed any any card besides Glimpse Beyond and Go Hard that was three mana and a spell or lower. 
and uh, you had a very, very hyper-efficient deck that became the king of the meta easily, right? And uh, really uh, shut down a lot of uh, prior top-tier meta kings, like, for example, Ash, Frostbite, Midrange, which was extremely dominant in the European Masters, went from that to, like, see no play whatsoever, and we're going to be covering that as well. Again, big shout-outs to Agigas. I am going to be using this article as a reference a lot to uh, talk about the decks that are mentioned here. I will also add a few things myself, uh, but ultimately, if you want to read this on your own, instead of just listening to me, you're free to do that. I, I hold nothing against you. <laughs> Not that good anyways. So uh, you will have the link in the description down below, the first line in the description down below. So in case you guys want to read the article, which I, I would encourage you guys to do. So let's hop on to the winners. Let's talk about the decks, the top tier meta decks uh, that are going to be benefiting from go hard being significantly nerfed i will also talk about like the impact of the nerf in go hard and if i expect it to be viable in any way whatsoever uh i will do so at the end of the video though just to make sure that i actually because this is more important for me uh covering this right so i'm trying to keep things structured <laughs> at least emphasis on the try we got Discard Aggro, ladies and gentlemen, the king of aggro slash burn decks, at least it was a few months back. Uh, it really uh, started competing with Pirate Aggro back in the day before the nerfs. And uh, I, I, I believe this was a better way to play aggro because at the end of the day, aggro decks are just kind of like tossing a coin. Like that's really what they are. They require the least amount of decision making. And it's more about, you know, getting the nuts, right? And just killing your opponent off before they get to do anything. So, uh, Draven Jinx was way more efficient at this than uh, Pirate Aggro, even though Pirate Aggro wasn't... Some people even consider the deck like, like a burn midrange, right? It, it wasn't really meant to go turbo, but I really do feel like uh, in certain matchups in which speed was rewarded more than anything, this deck was a stronger option to go for in my opinion and draven jinx discard aggro is phenomenal you know like if you draw the right opener you lead off with your zana yurkin into a flame chomper you turn to a uh, battle caster and then you draven with an axe into like a vision there's a lot of like really neat setups that you can have with this deck especially with with two drops like house spider as well and it's just a very very nasty archetype that uh disappeared from the ranked ladder because of Twisted Fate Go Hard. As you guys can see here, 30% win rate. Now, one thing that I really appreciate from this article and, uh, you know, being able to, like, it makes my video better in that sense, is that even though I am aware of these matchups, I am not aware of the exact, like, data, like, the exact number, right? Uh, this is very <laughs> shocking to me, not gonna lie. Like, I knew the matchup was bad, but 30% is really, really low. <laughs> Like, it's, it's abysmal. Like, they, they describe it right here very well, right? Uh, so, it's not a surprise that Discard Argo just disappeared from the face of the earth, right? And the same can be said about Ash Frostbite Midrange. So, this is very relevant uh, as now with uh, this deck gone, uh, you know, there are less predators running around for, you know, this crazy turbo archetype as uh, one of his other big predators was a deck that will definitely drop in usage after the ban to or the nerf to go hard because it was such a good counter to that deck. And that is the Field the Rush ramp deck with Shadow Owls that also had a 70% win rate against uh, Jinx Draven Discard, which is just bonkers, man. And that's like the fact that these two are gone are very good but that's not all as, as they mentioned here ash frost by midrange which is a deck that i expect to make a big big comeback onto the scene does have a very bad matchup against discard aggro in fact the best jinx draven players in the world have said that they never ever lose to ash frost by midrange right so uh in the hands of a good player that is a very you know steep uphill you know mountain to climb english that was there <laughs> at least i tried so uh we got that and uh the only downside is that it is um it is weak against uh ezreal draven which is definitely perhaps the biggest winner of this as we, we will be tackling that very soon but definitely one of the biggest and when it comes to full-on aggro decks the biggest winner out of the gohar nerf and expect Jinx to make a comeback. If you're into this sort of archetype, now is the time to play it, especially because all the Ash fanboys are coming back into the shop as well. 
I, I don't even know why I keep trying with these references, but, you know, but bear with me. As Ash Frost by Amazing Rings is a phenomenal archetype that was very dominant in the European Masters, like I said, alongside uh, Shiora. God damn, I always, I always say don't pronounce it wrong, and then that's when I say it wrong. Fiora Shen. Ash Frost by Midrange and Fiora Shen Midrange with Barriers were two very strong midrange unit-based decks that were extremely, extremely dominant in the European Masters. They kept getting banned every time, really. And uh, Ash went from that to complete irrelevance, right? But now that this horrendous matchup in 25% win rate, I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, why are you even trying at this point, you know? Because of that, uh, she just saw no play whatsoever right but now that that's gone like there's so many there's so many like ash frostbite uh players out there that are so happy about this uh this is an archetype that is actually really beloved by many and uh to see it come back is actually really exciting i'm i'm, I'm excited to you know jump into the fray with uh, my own variant of this as well i'm not really sold on the ribbon i think this is just you know uh, i don't i don't think that's necessary at all uh, even though she does provide good stuff like oh, the overwhelm cards and stuff, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm not sold on that honestly. Could be wrong, but I I don't think you need to play Riven in a deck like this, and you can make some space for some other champions potentially. I also like being edgy and playing a one off of Nox Cray Arena, but that's just me. Regardless, there there are several ways to build this deck, and uh, I I would like to return to it. I, I do miss it. You know, even though it's an old deck, it's been around for a long time. It's still fun to play nonetheless. If you're into this. The now's the moment, man. As we go on to Ezreal Draven. So when it comes to Legends of Runeterra, unfortunately, I, I believe my, you know, biggest legacy in this game is going to be the fact that I was that one guy who said Ezreal Draven was a bad deck. You know? And I have no... I it, Okay, so I was going to say, I, I actually do have a defense. Fuck that. I do. So first of all, this deck performed horribly in the European Masters. Like, you had Alan Z just talk about this deck. Like, it was the second coming of Jesus Christ. And then he just got 0-2, like, you know, back-to-back, -back, right, with it. So, I I really... Uh, I didn't have a... It didn't have a good showing as a caster. And then when I was playing in, in Masters Ranked Ladder, uh, I was facing a lot of players who were net decking this. And it turns out they weren't really... Even though I was in Masters, they weren't really piloting the deck properly. And uh, I got, you know... This generated many misconceptions, right, for me. Uh, as time has passed and I've seen more and more tournaments, you know, uh, happen. And uh, I've also, you know, people have actually learned to play this optimally, at least at the highest level. I, I really have witnessed the true potential of this deck. It is extremely resilient, sticky, and it's really good at pushing damage little by little. It, it really, it does play out like kind of like a, a bit of a mix between a control and a mid-range deck. And I love the fact that it's it's actually the deck that really makes Tribeam and Probulator shine, right? So, uh, huge fan of of this archetype, really. Even though I have shit talked it like to oblivion in the past, uh, I will admit I was wrong. Um, you know, it's I'm wrong a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm human. Like every <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pull the I'm a human card and uh, say you know, mostly I'm right, but sometimes even the greatest minds. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking. So yeah, uh, really good deck. Uh, definitely underrated it myself, and uh, definitely the biggest winner of Go Hard as it had a really, really uh, honestly. I, I knew I had a, a bad. You know, I, I was expecting something like forty. You know, forty two, forty four percent, something like that. But thirty six, that's lower than I than I expected. That's why it's really nice to have this data. Honestly, even though at the end of the day, these are just numbers, right? Like it doesn't really. But it, it does give you. It does help you look at the big picture a bit better. So uh, it says, uh, but there's more. Ezreal Draven also had a bad matchup against Field of Rush. Again, again, another example. Like uh, it shares a lot of similarities in that sense with um, with Draven Jinx. Even though Draven Jinx is the turbo version of uh, these two regions combined, and this one is more mellow, but they kind of operate in a similar fashion, uh, and that's why it's not a surprise that they do struggle with the same sort of decks. And uh, it's also really good against discard aggro, though. It is a slower, beefier, more reactive version of the deck, and it's able to uh, outmuscle it 
relatively easily, especially with toys like Static Shock, alongside the fact that they run their own version of, of House Spider. And uh, Ezreal can also be used really effectively to slowly but surely pick off their units with um, free Mystic Shots, even though they cost two mana, but, you know, value, value-wise, right? Um... So it has really good, uh, it has solid matchups against Demacia Scouts, Fiora Shen, uh, Ash Noxus as well. Honestly, this is a fantastic deck. Like if you want a deck that's going to be good and you're going to climb with it, uh, it is a deck, it has a, a, a steep learning curve. But if you're persistent and, uh, you know, you keep track of your plays and you try to improve every game, eventually you'll become a master. And uh, you will honestly body the entire ladder. Like, this is one of the best options to go for now. And now that Gohard is gone, this is... Um... And that's the thing about Draven Ezreal. Like, it's a deck that I'm... Even though I've, I've talked really badly about it in the past, I've always liked the deck. I've always loved this being something competitive. Because it's a cool deck, honestly. Like, it uses Tribe and Probulator, which is one of my favorite cards in the game. And it also has Captain Farron as a finisher, which is really, really cool. Like, I, I'm a big fan of, of Captain Farron. It's a really good card, but it got redesigned, right? Like, this card used to be, like, completely unplayable, and now it's just, like, really, really neat. And overall, like, the play style is something that I really like. Draven is actually one of my favorite champions. I don't care if he's popular. He's fantastic. I, I love uh, Draven's gameplay. I love, you know, keeping track of the axes. The axes just lead to so many, like, uh, neat, you know, decision making moments and everything it's just fan it's just really neat uh, I, I really love draven as much as he loves himself uh, maybe not to that degree but but pretty close to it honestly as uh just a really really solid deck and a deck that rewards you know very high level uh piloting and you know there's not much more i can ask for a deck like that so these are the three big winners um i would add in uh what would i add in here no because I, I wouldn't necessarily put lee sin as a winner, because Lee Sin had a good matchup against Go Hard, right? So Lee Sin is technically going to drop down a little bit, um, but it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how Lee Sin face is, like, mixes here, because Lee Sin is not mentioned in this, um, in this article. And uh, it's hard to say, like, exactly where it'll fit, but it, it will definitely be a Tier 1 deck, I think. I'm going to go ahead and, and make that assumption, because it, it's hard to believe it won't. So watch out for Lee Sin, Zoe. Uh, another, another winner, not like directly like these, like it did not have a bad, bad matchup against Go Hard. But the fact that, you know, one of the big guys just steps away from the throne uh, can only mean neat things. Even though the matchup and, and like the fact that Field of Rush is also going to drop. Yeah, like a lot of good matchups for Lee Sin ha are going to drop down. So it'll be interesting to see Lee Sin in this environment. I, I still think it'll be a fantastic deck, honestly. So obviously the loser is Twisted Fate Go Hard. Um, I'll wait to the, to the latter portion of the video to talk about like, you know, where I expect Go Hard to end that and all that stuff as we go down. Tom Ken Soraka. This is definitely a big loser of this. Uh, this deck was making a resurgence, especially in the tournament scene, because as they mentioned here, it, it was a good counter to Twisted Fade, Go Hard, and Zoe Lee. Look at this. 60 and 61% win rate. That's fantastic, man. That's so good. Uh, this, this deck was able to take down both of those as well. I was really thinking about, I was really close to making a video with this, but then, you know, the, the patch happened and I didn't have enough time, right? But it was a really good time to be playing Tom Ken Soraka. And that's one of the things that it's also important to consider, right? As I talk about Go Hard uh, later in the video, like, it's important to know that there's a big difference between ladder and tournament. It turns out Go Hard was actually pretty fine in tournaments, you know, because of the conquest format and the band format, like, you could actually run an anti go hard lineup right you could ban go hard as well like it, it was it was pretty fair in that environment but the problem is it was it was making the latter experience miserable for most so uh it had to go right but keep in mind that you know it, it wasn't as bad of a problem uh in tournaments as it was in ladder fearsome aggro is also uh yeah like it's also important to know that if ash Knox is making a, a comeback Ash just bodies this. I, I was expecting this to be even lower. Like, Ash absolutely bodies uh, Tom Ken Soraka. You know, with calling strikes and, and reckonings alongside frostbites. It's just insane, man. Like, this just, it's crazy. Uh, so, they definitely got to take that into account. Also, discard aggro and Ezreal Draven aren't, aren't good matchups for it. So, it's definitely going to struggle. Fearsome aggro, another deck. Uh, you know, similar story, like they say here to Tom Ken Soraka, it was already a bit down, uh, 
Um, and the fact that it, it loses a great matchup against Go Hard, it doesn't help. It was already in a down. Like, I, I was seeing less and less of this. Like, the Czechia Fearsome uh, was believed to be the best deck for, for a bit, especially during the European Masters when Czechia was just bodying everybody with it. But eventually, people caught on to its lack of interaction and uh, were able to kind of like figure out how the deck operated. And uh, it wasn't that hard to find out how to beat it, right? Um, a lot of players, you know, were able to do this relatively early on, but it was a great surprise factor in the tournament, and it definitely threw a bunch of the other countries off guard, so big props to Czechia, but uh, eventually everybody caught on to uh, the concept, and like I said, the fact that this deck was all about itself, and basically Frenzy Skitter was the only interaction it had with you, uh, definitely uh, led to its demise, I think, in the long run. But um, as you guys can see, Fiora Shen, which just absolutely bodies fearsome, you know, is, is going to be a big thing. I also would believe that um, Ash Frost by midrange does really good against this deck as well. Um, especially if you take into account the challengers, you know, if you're running stuff like Ryan Fang Wolf and of course Trifarian Glory Seeker, you'll be able to pick off their board with your Frostbites. And because they, they don't even run stuff like Vile Feast, they just can't really do anything with that. So... Yeah, I'm uh, going to struggle against other mid-range decks, but in the moment the meta takes a more, you know, polarized direction in, in which you either have, like, hyper aggro or control, then this deck can really make a comeback again. Feel the Rush, you know, the ramp deck uh, from... Uh, with combining Froyard and Shadow Owls with Commander Ladros and Feel the Rush. Um, even though this, this one doesn't have Feel the Rush, what the hell? This one's just the one that Commander Ladros and... Or maybe it's missing the card. I don't know. But this this archetype is um, is definitely you know it, it was one of the best counters to go hard. It, it will turn the game. unlike the other two losers. The passion for the rush at least gains a few advantages from the update. As a great matchup against both discard aggro and Ezreal Noxus. That's a good matchup against uh, Ezreal Draven. So even though it it has lost one of its prey. It's still relevant, and it's still a, a, a solid option to go for. And I like this deck being, you know, top tier, honestly. I think this deck is very healthy for the game. I think uh, I love deck building, taking, you know, matchups like this into account. And uh, I really, I think, you know, this sort of archetype is, is great. Especially, like, after the nerf to Trundle, I think it's balanced. It's strong, but balanced. And, uh, you know. All, all power goes to Field the Rush players. Hope you enjoy yourselves. As uh, we got Scouts as well taking a hit, or an L rather. Scouts have been quite risky, uh, rising quickly right lately, Jesus. And has even become one of the most popular and successful decks in the meta, taking up a comparable play rate and better win rate than Twisted Fate Go Hard. Like other losers from this patch, Scouts had a great win rate against Twisted Fate Go Hard with 59%. Scouts aren't too happy with other changes that might happen to the meta. Ezreal Draven is good against it. We knew that. Ash not. Oh my. Ash Frostbite just loves these mid-range Demacia matchups. Oh my god. Like with. In which their interaction revolves around combat. You know like with. Uh, and they're not even playing single combat. Like. Yeah. Like this is. This is. Uh, like reckoning. Dude. Like you're, you're facing a variant of Demacia that doesn't even play deny to counter reckoning. Right. Like. Ash has a field day with this. That's why I'm very, I'm very, very excited. I think, I think Ash may really make a, may put Grand Plaza in its place in a way, right? Like it's gonna be very exciting. Like the fact that Ash is coming back is, is it matters a lot, man. It matters a lot. There's a lot of other archetypes that it's kind of like a, the domino effect, right? As you're bringing back a a predator to all of these, you know super prevalent mid-range decks that revolve around combat and outpacing the opponent and all of a sudden like a deck that will shut down your power with frostbites and and get favorable trades on you and just slowly but surely dominate the board that's just that's gonna shake things up tremendously it's gonna be really fascinating to see how people adapt and uh, that's basically the article right there i really like it i think it's very well written i think the decks mentioned here are gonna be very relevant in the meta uh, it doesn't talk about Zoe Lee Sin. I guess because they don't feel like it's neither a winner nor a loser. Uh, and I would agree with that. Uh, even though it had a good matchup against uh, Go Hard, ultimately it's going... Um, I definitely do think uh, discard aggro will hurt uh, Zo uh, Zoe Lee Sin. I'm also thinking about uh, the likes of uh, Twisted Fate Swain making a comeback as well. Like I, I, I also think that's a deck 
that could potentially put in the work too. And I'm, I'm really excited, man. It's something that we've been waiting for for a while, and I think there's a lot of room for experimentation. Uh, there are some really solid, you know, options like m proven meta-defining options, but there's also room for innovation as well. You know, it's it, it's always the same. You know, when a big balance patch happens, and this is like the first patch, right? We can we can still expect patch 2.1, I believe, to happen relatively soon. And uh, I do definitely expect a bunch of changes in that one. So this is only the beginning. But for now, we're going to enjoy a couple of weeks of, uh, you know, no go hard. Uh, oh, yeah. Talking about go hard. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> like I'm, I'm all over the place with this video. When it comes to go hard, um, I did initially say that they murdered the card. They, they did murder the card. But it's it's not... I don't think it's safe to assume that the card is absolutely dead. I do think Twisted Fate go hard. I do definitely think this deck is is done. So um, maybe not, man. Maybe it's still good because you, you still have stuff like Pool Shark. But the thing is, this deck can no longer lock you out that way. This deck can no longer set you up because the biggest strength of this was that pack your bags would be one mana and you could just focus on you know in an initiative based card game. You can just play all your cheap cards and keep forcing your opponent to to pass until you're threatening too much damage and then they have to develop and then you all you need is one man in the back to just board wipe them like you can no longer do that right and i do believe this is a tremendous tremendous nerf to the deck and i just don't think it will remain viable um i could be wrong though it could still be a relevant tier two deck um but i just think there are better ways to play go hard uh, ways that don't revolve around us. Even though you can still use Zap Sprayfin to try to hoard in those those go hard, right? Like try to you know, because Zap Sprayfin will still you know get you the go hards before they convert it to pack your bags. Like Zap Sprayfin will only not work really if you have played three go hards back to back. So um, they're still like until we see people actually try this deck out after the nerf it, 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 I, i'm not gonna make a, an assumption that it's just completely gone but i do definitely think it will be uh it's i i have a very hard time seeing things otherwise regardless i do think go hard could still find home in slower decks like spooky karma you know even though i don't think those decks are that good it's been proven that you know those decks are very easy to capitalize on. They're they're easy to beat because they're slow. They're clunky. Uh, they have uh, you know they rely a lot on Shadow Owls uh, based removal, and they lack you know the ability that Bilgewater has to provide you with all these crazy good cheap units, right? So I, I do definitely expect that to be more of a niche option, and I don't think Go Hard will be in any tier one deck, and maybe not even in any tier two deck. Hopefully, but. Uh, I could be wrong, right? Good riddance, I think, uh, is what we're all thinking. And that's where I'm going to end this video at, you know, before I hit 30 minutes uh, talking about Go Hard. And I'm, I'm happy I can move on and <laughs> do two other things. And I'm really excited, man. I'm actually really excited to jump back into the game because Go Hard was really keeping me out of the loop uh, a little bit in that in that regard. I, I was uh, not, I wasn't like super discontent with the game, but honestly, like I wasn't enjoying myself as much because I was really tired of this meta. So now we get to enjoy a bit of a honeymoon phase before we find the next big thing to complain about. And that's basically it. Have a soul day. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. Again, shout outs to Agigas for the article. Check it out in the description down below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new deck. And yeah, that's basically it. Love ya. And I'll see you around.